Today, we're going to talk about Milan. Milan is magnificent and wonderful. The undoubted particular style that characterizes every neighborhood in Milan and runs through the blood of its residents is an intangible quality that is not replaceable. Milan offers a beautiful blend of modern skyscrapers and high-rise historical buildings, all infused with a touch of Italian culture. There are numerous stunning hotels, and the food over here is amazingly delicious. Shopping? Well, Milan is the place where people go to be seen. So be ready to flaunt yourself and have some cash ready. But before that, let's have a look at the top five things that you can do while in Milan. Number five, witness the enormity of Milan Cathedral. The Milan Cathedral is an enormous monumental structure that took more than 600 years to complete and is renowned for its exquisite architecture. The cathedral, which is situated in Milan's self-named Piazza del Duomo, was started in 1386, but wasn't finished until 1965. The cathedral's front facade, which has an Italian Gothic design, is truly magnificent and is adorned with numerous towers, statues, and decorations. Even if you choose not to enter the cathedral, you absolutely must stroll around its statue-studded exterior and up to its roof. Although there are higher vantage points in the city, something is thrilling about catching a glimpse of the Alps through the cathedral's marble spires and pinnacles, which are decorated with heavenly statues and ornaments. However, if you look closely on the terrace, you can see two boxers sparring. The sculpture commemorates Primo Carneria, the first Italian to proudly score the World Heavyweight Championship. A fantastic collection of artwork and some exquisitely detailed statues can be found between the central columns of the interior, which is equally ornamental and features some lovely stained glass windows sprouting with color. The center of Milan is this enormous building, and visiting the city would not be complete without setting foot inside its enormous doors. Number four, tour around the Navigili district. Milan's network of navigable and connected canals built over hundreds of years with an input from da Vinci himself gave the island city more access to the outside world. The Naviglio Grande and Naviglio Paverse, two of the few remaining canals today, are surrounded by a plethora of bars, eateries, and cafes that come alive on weekends. They were once used to transport goods, but now they're just for decoration. Leonardo da Vinci is responsible for turning these canals into something really useful, and these canals were a gateway to transport building materials for Duomo. And strangely, few people are aware that Milan has two canals. This is the ideal spot to be at while the sun sets and indulge in a typical Milanese snack. Numerous dining establishments, the Church of San Cristoforo, and the Alley of the Washerwoman, where women gather to wash their clothes, can all be found in the Navilligio Grande. The portion of the canal that runs through the heart of the city is a great place to walk, and is surrounded by historic structures as well as a variety of shops and eateries. A priceless antique market is also held there every last Sunday of the month. You can spend the afternoon at one of the many restaurants and terraces in the Navilligio Paverse. Additionally, it is Milan's buzzing nightlife spot. Take a stroll along a portion of the waterway and take in this uniqueness of Milan that is rarely seen or mentioned in travel guides. Number three, see the Last Supper at the Church of Santa Maria delle Grazie. The facade of this church, built in 1497, features a Gothic design made of red bricks and a sizable rear basilica. You can find this church on the Corso Magneta, which is on the other side of Milan from the Duomo. Even though it is not very well known, it still has that one masterpiece you'd love to witness with your own eyes. One of the world's greatest works of art, 
Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper is housed inside this structure. In contrast to frescoes, which are painted on wet plaster and thus must be completed quickly, da Vinci used tempura paints on drywall after sealing the stone with dried plaster and adding an undercoat of white lead to achieve greater luminosity. This method was the reason he took four years to complete the painting and properly portrayed the expressions of shock and anguish on the faces of the disciples who just learned that one of them would betray Jesus. It's also one of the reasons why the paint has flaked since the 16th century. Go see it before it deteriorates further and only reproductions remain. Number 2. Shop at the Golden Triangle You can't go to the world's fashion capital and not do some window shopping. The Golden Triangle, also referred to as the mecca of the fashion world, encompasses Via della Spiga, Via Santa Andrea, and Via Montan Apollione. All of the luxury brands, both Italian, Prada, Versace, Armani, and Dolce & Gabbana, and foreign, Louis Vuitton, Chanel, Yves Saint Laurent can be found here. Take a stroll down via Monte Napoleon, and it's easy to see why it's considered one of the world's chicest and most expensive streets. Several Prada stores, the flagship Gucci store, Pucci, Cartier, and Fendi, to name a few, can be found on this bustling street. Take a break halfway down the street at Cova Cafe and observe Milan's affluent sipping coffee in between purchases. Look for Hermes, Chanel, and Armani on Via San Andrea. If you can drag yourself away from the shops, which seem impossible in such fancy situations, do visit the Musée di Milano, housed in the 17th century Palazzo Bolognini. The pretty and pedestrianized Via della Spica is what tourists aspire to see when they visit Italy. Stroll down the cobblestone streets to find two Dolce & Gabbana stores, Roberto Cavalli, Tiffany & Company, and more Prada. If you only have time to visit one store in Milan, make it the Armani Megastore on Via Manzoni. It even has its own Nobu restaurant. There are also shops in Corso Buenos Aires, near the station, that cater to those who want to wear designer clothes for less such as shoe shops and warehouses selling off last year's designer styles. So being tight on a budget isn't even a problem then. And even if you don't feel like buying anything, just coming to see such a fancy portrayal of these luxury brands is a treat in itself. Number 1. Grand Galleria Vittorio Emanuele II As you enter the Grand Gallery, you would perhaps think you're in the lobby of an opera house or a palace, not a shopping mall. But in essence, that is what the Galleria is, an extraordinarily posh and grandiose indoor shopping area. It was structured by Giuseppe Mangioni and opened in 1877, making it one of the world's oldest shopping malls. The cross-shaped mall is surrounded by four glass-paneled arms that let in plenty of light. While the walls and shop fronts are adorned with ornate paneling and stucco artwork. Not a place to bargain, as you will find luxury brands like Prada, Gucci, and Louis Vuitton, as well as other high end boutiques here. It also houses several very well decorated restaurants, including some of Milan's oldest, such as Cafe Beefy, which was founded in 1867. Surprisingly, there is also a McDonald's in the gallery. To make it go well with the rest of the interior, it is adorned with black columns and gold decorations. It has a comfortable terrace where you can sit and enjoy an inexpensive drink while admiring the atmosphere and elegance of this magnificent structure. A mosaic depicting the Savoy coat of arms and various animals representing some of Italy's most important cities can be found beneath the central dome. According to legend, locals or visitors will have good luck if they step on the bull with their right foot and turn 360 degrees with their eyes closed. 
It will bring you good luck for a whole year if you step on the bull at midnight on December 31st. Whether you're a fashion freak or an art geek, or simply someone who loves to admire the great architecture, Milan is the place for you. Do you plan on seeing The Last Supper before it completely deteriorates? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, where to next?